Please welcome to the studio the one and only skipper of the Port Adelaide Football Club, Mr. Travis Bowe. Yes. Good morning, guys. How are we? Oh, thanks, uh, well done to you and the Port Adelaide Football Club. We know you're an ambassador for childhood cancer, but you handed over the traditional number one captain's Guernsey to little Henry Micken on the weekend. Yeah, look, it wasn't the result we wanted, but a fantastic and special weekend for Henry and his family. Mm. And um, yeah, so I handed over the number 10 for the day and as part of the childhood number one, cancer... Mate. Wow. Sorry, number the number 10. one. I yes. uh, handed over the number one, wore number 10 for the day and yeah. as part of... The Childhood Cancer Association, the Port Adelaide Footy Club, have come together the last two years now and and uh, made a special kid's dream of being captain for the day. And he came in and led the boys out wearing the number one. And um, he was actually in the warm-up. So yeah. the boys mm-hmm. got him in the warm-up before. So Fantastic. we did little drills inside. So he was in there <laughs> kicking and, and oh. handballing with the boys. And look, it was a special day. And yeah. um, uh, friends at Nike were able to send over a pair of boots for him as well. Stop so it. he had a pair really? of boots with his initials on it and the number oh. one. So, yeah, it was um, no, it was a special day for him. That is really? very, very cute. Did you like slipping off the number one and just relinquishing like the sort of, you know, the uh, pressure of being captain and going back to the number 10 when you weren't captain and you didn't have all that responsibility? Yeah, well, it was, it's a funny one because, I mean, it's, it's just a number, but it does mm. carry so much tradition and... Mm. Uh, at Port Adelaide, and it was it was quite nice to put the number ten on again and yeah. um, nostalgic. Hand hand over the uh, the responsibilities to Henry for the day, so it was mm. good. But we we did have some other little stuff uh, yeah. involved, and um, you know this this was what shows you know what our club's about and, and the people in we cl- in our club. And this wasn't even planned at all. And so Nathan, who looks after you know a bit of property and the footies and stuff, game day, he grabbed one of the game balls after the game mm. and, and went around and signed. We got it all signed by all the players. Gave that to yeah. to Henry as well. So we got a game ball and. Uh, our dietitian uh, M made a little protein shaker for him as well, oh. so he felt part of it all. So we all come in at the end of the game, get our protein yeah. shake, and he made he, she made him a uh, a little chocolate shake, and he was shake it. And That's so cute. <laughs> so it was a it was a special day. It was well done. Day. No, your club does wonderful things for society, and uh, I love that they do that. So well done for childhood cancer and Boker. You are of course an ambassador for them. Uh, now. Jody pranked me, mm. the worst prank I've ever yep. been involved with, where she got all these people in a focus group to tell me how ordinary I am. Um, the worst or best? Uh, no, it, well, the worst and the best. Okay. <laughs> how do you, you handle it? No, nah, terrible, well? Pokey. I actually was, was questioning who I am as a person. These right. people really got into my head. Mm. Um, and then even afterwards, I'm still going, oh, Jesus, I'm, I'm no good at any of this. So I need to go and get a new job. I'll it is an easy head to get into, yeah. into though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big head. Big but head. You, have, he, you have to explain what you did. You started to um, well, be Pokey, introspective. Was, you started to go, um, why are these people saying this? And what can I change about yeah, myself to make me a better person? You thought I was going to go Coco Bananas. Yeah, I did. And Pokey, I didn't even go mad. I'm just sitting there going, wow. Do I really get perceived as this sort of person? How can I make myself a better person? Because, you yep. know, you just want to learn and you want to take on some feedback. Yep. There was so much feedback, I thought some of it had to be real. Yeah, right. That would have been hard to hear. And it just shows you the power of social media. Or yes. in your case, um, yep. sitting, you know, yeah, listening to people have a go at you. It, just, it mm. does hurt, doesn't it? Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I'll be getting Jody back. Um, pranks yep. at the footy club. Who, who was the king prankster? Uh, oh, back in the day, it was probably Daniel Motlop. Mm-hmm. He was really good. Uh, he did a really good one on David Roden. So Dave loved it. He had like a little black um, sports car mm-hmm. when, he, when he rocked up. He loved his car. Yeah. And, and Mott's got some, got some glass. I don't know where he got it from. And, and covered it all around the side of his car. Yeah. Um, and wound down his window. <sighs> so Genius. Dave, they've walked out together and, 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 and Dave's looked at the car and thought, oh no, someone smashed my window oh, and, and no. broken in. Yeah. And he's driven around. Covered it up for about a week. <laughs> with plastic? <laughs> with plastic. For a week. And then eventually, you know, Motz has pretty, got a pretty straight face. And, yeah. and, and uh, after a week, I don't know how it all sort of come about. He said, oh, just, you know, try one up your window. And he went up his window and... You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, That's so Daniel one. was one of the best. Have, um, they, have they ever gotten you? Um, I got done once um, by Robbie, Paul, I reckon it was Mitch Farmer at the time. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I used to live by myself at Woodville and, uh, downstairs, I've like, you walk in downstairs, it was like a little lounge room and at mm. the time playing Call of Duty, obsessed with Call of Duty and I have it really What's loud. this like a Nintendo game thing? Yeah. So it, on uh, PlayStation. Okay. Um, what are you eight? Well, no, everyone, well, everyone's on Fortnite now. It was Call yeah. of Duty back then. Right. Um, and I used to like yell at the TV and all that sort of stuff, get right into it. Yeah. And, um, so they've snuck in my house, gone upstairs, which is the, which I don't know how I didn't see them. The, mm. the staircase is right behind the lounge room. So. Yeah. They've snuck up, destroyed my room, put stuff everywhere. Yeah. Um, I've had no idea. They've snuck out. Um, I've gone upstairs. I thought someone had like, robbed me, mm. like, robbed the joint. Broken in. And so I've rang the cops <gasps> and said, someone's 
come in and um, yeah, I, I don't know what they've stolen, but destroyed my place. They've taken a report, everything. Fingerprint? Um, no, nah, I didn't didn't get to that stage. Oh, it was just yeah. a report at this yeah. stage, and then um, the boys text me later saying. It was them trying to bring the cops back and say it was a joke. Oh. But I don't know how I didn't understand because yeah. no. one of them just took a big crap in my toilet and, and left oh. my toilet paper or something. Oh. And hang on. Oh. Well, that's a bit that's a bit full on. You needed CSI to come in and analyse that. <laughs> Travis Boak, uh, good luck this on weekend. On that note. Good Thanks. on you, buddy. Thank you.